Well, good morning, my friends. You are looking at, apparently, what is a dry hand. Yesterday, when I picked up the lioness at the airport, she was holding my hand. She said, God, your hands are dry. Drier than usual, so... I'm guessing being out in Palm Springs kind of worked me over, so I have to put some lotion on my hands. What a sad way to start the vlog, huh? <laughs> what a sad, sad way to start a vlog. Well, those are our LA skies today, friends. Not great, but not terrible. I don't mind an overcast day. Well, you guessed it. Starting the day off at the park. Well, good morning, my friends. How are you? It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and we are back here at the park that Ja loves so much. And today's vlog is actually gonna be something that I was planning on doing before I left. Didn't end up getting to do it, so we're gonna do it now. One of the former homes of the highest paid MGM star for a very long stretch of MGM's heyday, Wallace Beery. I've told you a little bit about Wallace Beery in the past. At one point, he was married to Gloria Swanson. He was also involved or suspected of being involved in the Ted Healy beating. But we're gonna see one of his houses today. A house that he lived in and, like I said, my favorite era of movies, the 30s. Hi. Now, Wallace Beery's always been kind of a, an interesting person to me because he got started in comedic opera in New York and somehow blossomed into a major star for SNA, which was one of the earliest silent film production companies. Then he ended up working for Max Sennett. He ended up working for, I believe, Paramount for a short time. He definitely was working for MGM, and I came to know him from seeing movies like Grand Hotel and. The movies that he made with Gene Harlow and Clark Gable. But where I really kind of lost favor with him was a movie he made with John Gilbert. And I'll tell you guys that story. I guess I got a text message. I'll tell you guys that story when we get there. Now also, one of the funny things about Wallace Beery is that as manly as he was, and he had completely manly you know, traits, big hands, big features, was known for being a fighter. He got his start playing a cross-dressing Swedish maid. Also, really made a name for himself in the Marie Dressler movies, pairing up with her, and she was the biggest star of the day, so pretty interesting. Maverick! Hi, Mav! Jaws buddy Maverick. Well, the house that we're gonna see today of Wallace Beery's is actually pretty interesting because it's one of the few William Kessling streamlined modern houses that's still around. I think maybe there's 12 in total, but this one, he actually was contracted by Wallace Beery in 1936 to build two. Um, some rumored that it was one for him and one for his brother. It's kind of a crash pad uh, while he was in the city drinking and filming and doing various things. This was a place that he could come and rest his head at night. And this was the only one that had any kind of water or fountain that William Kessling ever did. Um, and there's actually a koi pond in the back of this place. Now this was the house that the man who would play Richard the Lionheart in Robin Hood, he would win an Oscar for best actor in The Champ and he actually, he won it but he didn't win it because Frederick March in the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde movie actually received one more vote but in those days, the Academy said that if there was a one vote difference it was actually a tie. Pretty interesting. Um, like I said earlier, he got his start, like, I mean, really shot to fame in the Men and Bill series with Marie Dressler, but he was pretty well noted for his antics um, outside of being on stage as well. I mean, if you read the Fixers book, Howard Strickling, who was one of the people who was responsible for going out and having to clean up any messes that the stars would make and um, around the uh, Hollywood area, said that he had went to Louis Mayer numerous times saying that Wallace Beery was constantly a problem. He was causing fights, he had been accused of impregnating women and then tricking them uh, by giving them basically a, um, an abortion pill. He was also known for stealing props off the set and when they went to Louis Mayer about all this, Louis Mayer just said, 
you know what, every family has a black sheep and he's ours and he's a money maker and you're just going to have to live with it. But he had a pretty big career. I mean, he starred in just about, I mean, they said in his entire career during talking pictures, he never once, the, the movies that he made never once lost a dollar. And um, like I said, this was the house that William Kessling, the famed architect, built for him. But one of the weird stories that I read was that he was an absolute terror on set. Wallace Beery, um, especially like with child actors, a lot of the child actors like Jackie Cooper that worked with him said that um, they would go to do a scene and go in to give him a hug and he'd shove him away or, or like push him away or be really gruff to him. The actress Margaret O'Brien said that she had to have people on set help watch him for her because he was constantly pinching her on set. Gloria Swanson, um, I believe, married him when she was a very young teenager, 17 or 18 years old, and he was 31, 32. And um, it was even said that, that he, it was said that, I mean, I, I don't know other, how else to say it, that she had claimed that he raped her on their wedding night and also had given her an abortion pill when she became pregnant. When FDR um, made basically part of what was grazing land in the Teton Pass and Wyoming, um, he made it sacred parkland. A lot of the ranchers there uh, staged a protest, and Wallace Beery actually was there and helped head up the protest of 500 cattle marching across this land. So, pretty bizarre guy and a pretty bizarre story because. For as talented as he was, you can find just as many stories. I mean, he, for all the great things he did, he adopted two daughters. Uh, but they said one of the daughters that he adopted, he, it was the second one he adopted her and made an announcement in the media and then never followed through with the process and nobody ever heard or saw her again. I told you guys earlier he was um, responsible or at least has been pinpointed as being the person re responsible for the Ted Healy beating that eventually led to his death, that those two always had a beef. And in fact, one of my favorite silent movie stars, John Gilbert, um, he had personal problems with Louis Mayer, and when Louis Mayer decided uh, to ruin his career at the birth of Talking Pictures, what he did was he told uh, how, or what was his name, Douglas Shear, the sound engineer for all the MGM movies, he told him to turn off all the bass and baritone off of John Gilbert's voice so that he would have a thin, effeminate voice. And this pretty much ruined his career, uh, sent John into a spiral of drinking. And when he finally came out of that, I can't recall whether it was Marlena Dietrich or whether it was Greta Garbo, one of the two um, went to the studio and said, give him another chance, please, you know, put him in something else and almost basically demanded it. And when they put him in this movie, Louis Mayer hated John Gilbert so much that what he did was he cast that movie, it was called Way for a Sailor. He cast it with all the notable drunks on the roster starring John Gilbert and Wallace Beery. And what Wallace Beery would do is he was known as being a prankster. Um, the whole movie was about John Gilbert being uh, a drunken sailor and he was supposed to be drinking throughout the movie and what they had done is they had filled his bottles with tea, like iced tea, and Wallace Beery would go and swap them for real alcohol. Um, and it, you, it was noticeable on camera and it was, that was the end of John Gilbert's career as we knew it. And it actually doesn't look all that big from the outside, but it has a pretty deep backyard. I saw online, and like I said, it has a koi pond, it has a um, flower garden. So it seems like a very comfortable place. And then the inside, I saw photos of the inside, and it's extremely spacious. But it's just weird to think of someone who was one of the biggest stars and one of the most hated stars in the history of filmmaking. Would it for a time, be walking up and down this sidewalk, entering this place, and calling it home. Now even though Wallace Beery early on in his career had a lot of hits with his Sweetie shorts, S-W-E-E-D-I-E, -E -E, as in when I told you guys he was playing a Swedish maid in drag,
He had a lot of success with this, but once he went to Max Sennett Studios, he wasn't having great success at all. And when he married Gloria Swanson, she was actually the main breadwinner for their family. And they say that that was a lot of what ended up ruining their marriage, as well as his pretty heavy temper and their age difference. Now, one of the only child actors that ever did say anything nice about Wallace Beery was Mickey Rooney. And Mickey Rooney's father was very good friends with Wallace Beery and said that, you know, Mickey, or Mickey said that when he was on sets with Wallace Beery, Wallace was always very in tune with the child actors, knew how to get the best out of them and knew how to bring a smile to their face and joke with them and lift their spirits. But then Wallace Beery was quoted as saying that he saw Mickey Rooney as a brat, but a talented brat. Now generally when I do a vlog, I always try and keep it pretty even handed and I try not to let um, my opinion or how I've developed an opinion of the person play into what I'm telling you. But in this particular case, for as many somewhat decent things or good achievements as an actor you could find, you found just as many negative things that people had to say about him or negative stories. And I didn't even go into some of the worst ones, but I felt that, especially with this case and this person and what he's been accused of in many cases I just I felt it was very important to let you know everything that had been said about him or both sides of his personality that people had reported all right well I had to make a quick stop and buy some envelopes to mail out the patreon reward so if I owe you something it'll either be in the mail today or tomorrow you have my word on it well that's a funny way of decorating the windows now for a uh, rental RV well, I'm out taking this guy for a quick walk and then I'm gonna head off to the post office because uh, I had a vacation hold on until August 9th and it's now the 14th and I'm still not getting my mail, which is pretty common for my post office. They're not very good and a lot of packages that I've ordered don't ever show up as well as a lot of mail. So I'm gonna go and try and mail out. It's funny, all the things that I mail out get there, but the things that are coming in never do. So. I'm going to mail out all the Patreon packages and uh, find out why I'm not getting my mail. And then we're going to hit the grocery store. I mean, you may use it, but I wouldn't recommend it if you want to live. Actually, when I was at that catering event on Saturday, a lot of the uh, servers were having a conversation comparing how many times they've been hit and run on bicycles by cars. So <laughs> that's why I don't have a bicycle out here. Wow, do you see what I see? Let's go take a look. Look at that. They recreated the house right here on Hollywood and Vine. So somebody just told me this is gonna be here all week, so I may have to come and take a tour of it here one of these days before it goes away. Look at that. And the tourists are taking full advantage. Yeah, you literally never know what you're gonna see in Hollywood, including the It House. I have noticed a ton of this since I've been back. Almost every left-hand turn I've made has been onto a street that has a road closure for some reason. All right, let's see if I can't find some of my mail from the last three weeks. These birds are going nuts. So you know how, guys, every single time I have anything mail-related, there's always an issue. I just showed up to pick up my mail to find out why they haven't been delivering it. In three weeks, two pieces of mail. That is all that was waiting there. None of the paychecks that I'm owed, None of the mail that should have come this week, so I don't know what's going to happen. They don't really seem to have an answer. Um, I haven't gotten mail literally delivered in my box since I got back. I even talked to the carrier today. She said nobody told her there was a hold. You know, it's 
typical Hollywood post office. The Wilcox post office is by far the worst post office I've ever had to deal with, by far. So now, thanks to this place, I have to contact all the employers that owe me money and have to ask them to resend checks, which is not the easiest thing to do. All right, got a few supplies and got another day of work this week. So that might mean uh, for an excursion vlog. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today. I hope you enjoyed seeing that amazingly historic architectural house. And if you don't know anything about Wallace Beery, you probably do now. Have a great night, and I will see you all tomorrow. From your old pal Jordan the Lion in Hollywood, California, good night. Ah.